The storm is you are facing this morning. I want to say to you, don't you dare quit on God. Don't you dare quit on yourself. Don't you dare quit on, on your family. Don't you dare quit on your nation. Don't you dare quit on your career. Don't you dare quit on your vision. You keep on keeping on. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, all things work together for good to those who love God. Come on. The Bible says, He will make all things beautiful in His time. than just the house, Talita Kumi is a home that brings hope and healing to children, changing their lives. We are hosting our second annual Talita Kumi House of Safety Golf Day in Bloemfontein on Friday the 5th of August 2022. This is to raise funds for the care of our children and for the completion of the current building project which includes five homes set to establish our children's village. Each house will become a home for eight beautiful children, changing their lives forever. If you would like to be a part of this, find out more on our website at crcchurch.com. At our CRC Bible School, we offer eight-week courses that equip you with biblical principles and practical understanding for every area of your life. Visit our website today at crcchurch.com to find out how you can be a part of Term 3 starting on the 26th of July. Who says having a fun holiday should mean losing your testimony? Remember December provides Christian youth with a safe and fun holiday where they can relax, have fun, make memories, and still be the hands and feet of Jesus. Remember December will take place at the Wilderness Hotel from the 2nd to the 11th of December, 2022. So, if you are in matric or a student, what are you waiting for? Sign up for the adventure of a lifetime. Not only will we have incredible activities each day, we will get to reach out to the lost and broken in Plettenberg Bay. Fulfilling the call to win the lost at any cost. This is a holiday you will never forget. Visit our website now at crcchurch.com.
and I hail from God. I'm born from above. I have God on the inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The greater of the heavens and the earth live on the inside of me. How can I resign myself to the mundane and to the small and to the average of this world? To be a risk taker at the word of the Lord, to step out, to venture further, to get out of the comfort zones of life. There's something bigger on the inside. There's something greater on the inside. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of me. That's why I'm not going to fit in. I'm going to stand out. I'm not going to roll over. I'm going to take over. Oh, come on. Well, a very good morning to you, CRC watching all over, live, right here from Pretoria. We're going to have a fantastic time in the presence of God. Are you ready to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Here we go! Hey! He took me out the grave, so I could stand again, face to face. Shook me to the core, so I believe in more. Faith to faith, faith to faith. I found my joy, my peace. Now I'm set free. Now I'm breathing for the first time. Come on, for the faith of your name, we lift you higher. Our lives never the same. We lift you higher.
Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Hallelujah. He's worthy of a praise. I am lifted up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a God that never gives up on us. This morning, if you need prayer for anything, the pastors, the leaders are waiting online to connect with you, to pray with you. If that is you, connect with us. We're going to continue to worship in Jesus' name mighty name.
this fire in some I do come and purify
Come on, how great is it to be back without your mask? Man, as you own so kon geskreet op loftes, dan kan jy harder skree. Want jou span is nie bezig om te verloor nie. You are part of the winning team. Come on, the grave is empty. Jesus rose from the grave so you can make a joyful shout unto God. Not two minutes in uh, spare time. Okay, whatever it was, okay. We are standing in God's presence. We are standing on the holy ground. And after 27 months of lockdown, we are excited and we are happy that people are returning to church unafraid. If people can go sit in a rugby stadium and fill it, surely we are going to see our churches fill to overflow again. If you believe it, say amen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Welcome this morning. God loves you. I only have good news for you. And I am going to challenge you and stretch you to go higher and to go further and to go stronger in all that God has for you. So if you are ready for good news, you better unbuckle your seatbelt and get ready to move into the future that God has for you. Welcome to TBN, TBN Year 2, One Gospel Praise TV, hundreds and hundreds of thousands with us live in the service, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CRC Online, radio stations, correctional facilities, that is a miracle live every single Sunday in Zambia. And then all over South Africa and other places, also in Russia. We pray for Russia. We pray for Ukraine. We welcome the people that are watching us today. Pray for peace in that nation in Jesus' name. Israel, America, Europe, India, Pakistan, China, and all over Africa. Let everything that I breathe praise the name of the Lord. Come on. You're alive and you are well. And God is on your side. Amen. Give somebody a big high five and then sanitize and say, God loves you. And so do I. I want to continue this morning to talk to you about being a, a, a risk taker or a safety seeker. We've got to get up and go. I said we have to get up and go. And we have to get the COVID sluggishness out of us. And raise our level of expectation. No matter what the doomsayers are saying, the naysayers are saying, the world economists are saying, we have to focus on what God says, who says, I know the thoughts I think toward you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So 2022 will be your year of God's orchestrated breakthrough. If you believe it, say amen. Of course, we welcome all the churches with us all over South Africa, the thousands in Bloomerang South and North where this move began, then also um, in Valcom and Durban and Belito and Gaborone and Vintuk and all the other churches whose pastors are on a holiday while I'm standing in the gap for you with my shoulder braced. So have fun in the sun. Amen. So I declare that this will be your year of divine breakthrough. I believe that every church in the second part of this church, is, uh, this year, we'll see tremendous breakthrough, increase and enlargement. You can say amen, every pastor, every family, every business and every member. How many of you have big dreams here today? Say amen. How many of you believe that your best years are ahead of you? Oh, come on, I want the 50-year-old pluses to praise the Lord this morning. Make a joyful shout. Show the young people how it should be done. Your best years are alive or ahead of you if you are 60. So uh, we're not ready to retire, we're ready to refire. Good things are heading your way. So I have a question for you this morning if you are believing that your best years are ahead of you. How many ditches have you dug? Are you a teaspoon digger or a shovel digger? So you can write it down, title, teaspoon or a shovel. What's in your hand? What is your expectation? What is it you are believing God for? Because nothing just happens. I know that many of you have been through turmoil, you've been through tragedy, you've been through disappointment, you've been through setbacks. Many of you have lost many things like Job who lost on one day absolutely everything in his life. But hey, God never cursed God. Job never stayed away from church. The Bible says he fell to the ground and he worshipped. So 
when you are knocked to the ground by life my dear friend do not stay on the ground you worship up you get up again you get back into the presence of God like David after he lost his child the Bible says he washed himself he anointed himself he dressed himself anew he went into the house of God and he worshiped and I want to say this because I know some of you are hurting in this place this morning and some of you need comfort hey the great comforter is yeah and the greatest thing you can give God is your praise and your worship in your lowest moments in your life that is when it is called a sacrifice of praise when you feel like not praising God and yet you show up when you feel like life is not good and yet you decide to say for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever come on we serve a great God if you believe it say amen and give him a praise in Jesus name come on there in Johannesburg this morning give him a praise there in Bloemfontein North come on there in Durban your pastor is preaching in London this morning CRC give the Lord a praise Man, ek sal hier net loof en prijs die hele sondag. Want uh, ons is nou onontbasker. Uh, let's not forget how bad it was with the mask, etc. We should praise God louder and we should be happy. And all those beautiful smiles that you've hidden, you should show them pakkeitana and show us that you are happy, that you're alive, that you're alert, that you're believing in a great future. In the name of Jesus Christ. Not the same old, same old. So we read the story of King Jehoram that's attacked by the Moabites who were fierce enemies of Israel in that day. He's the king of Israel, but Israel becomes a divided kingdom. And the Moabites decide to attack the Israelites. And he calls the help of Judah and Moab. And then he calls for a prophet. So as they go to the battleground, they know God is with them. But I want to say that this king of Israel wasn't a king that served God. And trouble came and he turned to God. And I want to say to somebody, it's never too late to turn to God. I don't care how bad you were, how low you were, what you have done. It's never too late to turn back to God. And when you turn to God, you are going to find a merciful Savior. So we read 2 Kings chapter 3, the Bible says... In verse 9, so the king of Israel went to the king of Judah and the king of Edom and they marched on a roundabout route seven days and there was no water for them or for the animals. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called all these three kings to deliver together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet? Jehoshaphat, man of God, spiritual man, we know his story. King of Israel is a doubter. Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, is a believer. The one is cynical. The one is an optimist. The one believes that there is no hope. The other one believes, while I am alive, I have hope and I have a future and things can get better. No matter what the odds are against me. But Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord? Old Testament God spoke by the prophets that we may inquire of the Lord by him. So one of the servants of the king answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is Yah, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. Then Elisha said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? The man's ungodly. He's not serving God. He's not one of those men of God that bows to the king. He stands his ground. Because he's there to stand for God and not to stand for politics. He says, go to the prophet of your father, prophet of your mothers, prophet of your ancestors. Let me stay there. But the king of Israel said to him, no, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Again, he believes that he's going to lose the fight. Like many people today, they believe there's no hope. They believe the only way for a better life is to buy a ticket to Australia or New Zealand or to migrate to Cape Town, which is a country by itself. Kijk eens, so jylle, ek gaan nou nie, ek wil nou nie op jylle toon en trap nie, en ek bedoel het nou nie persoonlik nie, maar jylle wat dink het is lekker en stil by, ons doop die plek nou lawaai by, ok? In Jesus naam, en slaap stad, kaap stad, nie, nie, 
Yeah, you stay young. You're not going to scale down. Oh, come on, man. You're not going to take things easy. You're not going to plan to retire. You are going to plan to live full. You are going to revive your dreams and you are going to revive your hope. And you are going to believe God that you still have a future because the Bible says where there is no vision, people perish. You better have a vision for yourself and for your children and for your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren because your vision keeps you alive. Not sitting and sucking your thumb in a corner somewhere waiting for the rapture bus. We have places to go and we have things to do. We have territory to conquer in God's kingdom and that means for you as a businessman as well. God anointed you, God appointed you as a king in this time. God wants you to take new territory for Him in business. Can you say Amen? Elijah said, verse 14, As the Lord of hosts live, therefore, who I stand, surely were it not that I, uh, that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you, nor see you. Wow! <laughs> not impressed by your status and by your bank balance. But now bring me a musician. It happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water so that you, your cattle, your animals may drink. And you also, because we understand that water is a life source, right? You cannot fight without water. Water means death. Water means starvation. Water means no, lack of water means no future. Listen to what he says in verse 18. He says, and this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. <laughs> How many is there? there are tens and tens of thousands of people. There are animals and everything. There's a drought. And uh, the, the, pro, the, the king turns to God in a moment of desperation. He's crying for a miracle. And here comes the miracle through a prophet who says, make some ditches. You make the ditches, God will fill the ditches. You do the possible, God will do the impossible. Notice that God never told the king how many ditches to make. Here a ditch, daar a ditch, oorhal a ditch. Nee, a klein ditch of a groot ditch. Versgewe nou maar hierdie dier mekaar taal vandag, want dit is toch Zuid-Afrika. God never told them how large the ditches should be. God never told them how many ditches there should be. So, I mean, they are tired. Think about it. Like many of you after COVID, you are tired. You've had losses in business. You've had a loss in your marriage, loss in your family. You've lost some loved ones. And people are struggling. It is a fact with COVID fatigue. Remember when David recovered at Ziklag? And everybody was so tired that they lay on the ground. And the Bible says David strengthened himself in the Lord. And then David, together with 600 others, at the word of the Lord, pursued the enemy. And they attacked the enemy from evening the one day till, or from dawn the one day till the evening of that same day. They fought. They were as tired as dogs, but they had to do the possible. They had to do what they could do so God could do what only God can do. I'm sure this king expected when the prophet prophesied that there would be lightning from heaven or like many times in the Bible, we see God send an angel and he wiped out the enemies. But God doesn't deliver them from the battleground. God doesn't take them out of the fight. What God does is he tells them in a moment of tiredness, you dig some ditches. When you dig the ditches, when you do the possible, when you say the right prayer, when you forgive that person, when you sow your seed, when you work a little bit harder, when you study for that degree, when you do the possible at the word of the Lord, God will fill the ditches. And God says, it is but a simple matter in my eyes. I don't know what you are facing, but I tell you, it's not bigger than what these people faced. And I want to tell you that your challenge, how to solve that challenge and resolve that challenge 
in the mind of God is but a little thing. It's but a simple thing because God says, is there anything too hard for me? I don't know in Jeremiah. He says in Mark 10, 27, things that are impossible, men are possible with God. With God, all things are possible. If he says 3 verse 20, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. All you can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of you. Oh, come on, don't sit there with half a praise. Give the Lord a praise today. Give God a praise filled with expectation. In Jesus' name, He's the rainmaker. There's a lot of people who have got great plans, but they never get busy. A lot of people talk about the future, but they change nothing. They don't change their conversation. They don't change their actions. So this king is desperate. He turns to God. God sends a prophet who, who respects him because of his relationship and association with Jehoshaphat. I've learned that if God blesses you, it's always through something. You don't want to break wrong relationships and you don't want to keep wrong relationships. Because if the blessing of God comes, it is you being planted in the right church. It is you associating with the right people. That's just how God operates. He's always going to bless you through somebody. He's always going to give you favor with somebody. He's always going to bring you in, 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 in favor with the right person for your breakthrough. So this man wants a miracle. God says, go get a shovel. Not shuffle. A lot of people shuffling around. Better get a shovel. Nou kan ek nou nie alles optel hier so vandag, jy mag so maar probeer, kom hier so iemand help my gauw en geef my die graaf, die groot graaf, gee daar ene, no that's, that looks like a, a political party, give me the other one, <laughs> lift it up and put it in my hand, thank you, so um, not, not the most intelligent thing to do right now, but that will be a moment, so the, I have to ask you what is in your hand, when Moses went to deliver Israel, God asked him, what is in your hand? When David went to defeat Goliath, God asked him, what is in your hand? When Samson defeated and slew the Philistines, he had to put something in his hand. There had to be something in his hand because God cannot bless nothing. God cannot play, bless empty. So what is in your hand this morning? What prayers are you praying? Shuffle prayers? Shovel prayers? teaspoon praise. What is your level of expectation this morning? Have you got shovel expectation or teaspoon expectation? What is your level of anticipation? What is the level of your efforts? What is the level of your belief this morning? What is the level of your activity? Teaspoon or shovel? And for many people, they have nothing in their hands. Absolutely nothing. They are just expecting something has to happen now listen i've been a pastor for 35 years nothing just happened if something is broken it has to be fixed if something is dead it has to come alive if something is lost it has to be found that prodigal son didn't find himself that lost sheep didn't find himself that lost coin didn't find itself somebody had to go and somebody had to go and recover you have to recover your losses you have to get off your blessed assurance your rusty dusty you have to get back on your feet in the name of jesus with a positive spirit of expectation and my brother you better get busy you better get busy not shuffling along but busy shoveling digging digging with god digging like peter master we have toiled all night and caught nothing nevertheless at your word we will lay down the nets again so after obeying God going back into a place where they failed at the word of the Lord because it's the word of the Lord that activates your faith he laid down the nets on the other side now really in a little boat it makes no difference whether the net is this side or that side wasn't the point the point was you have to do things different you cannot do business the same some methods you have to revive, some methods you have to change. That's why when you read the Bible, you will not see God does one miracle the same way. He does it differently. Why? So it doesn't become a method. So you live dependent on Him. So you walk in a relationship with Him. So you obey God. So that you can get wisdom from the source of wisdom. 
so that you can act when God spoke. You know, Samuel was an amazing young man who God called to be a prophet or high priest in the place of Eli. And the Bible talks about Samuel and says, he never allowed one of God's words to fall to the ground. It got me thinking. How many words has God spoken and we've just dropped it to the ground? Or God spoke a word and the time wasn't right? Or God spoke to us and we spoke to our spouse or we spoke to our friends and we never acted on the word of the Lord? These people were in a desperate situation and the solution is simple. God says, get busy. God says, dig some ditches. God says, I am the rainmaker. God says, I specialize in making rain. But you want them ditches filled? Little American there. You need to specialize in digging ditches. You need to specialize in improving yourself, in developing yourself, in finding new ways and new avenues to increase your business. You need to be like Isaac in a second famine. You have to go dig another well, but you cannot stay inactive. You cannot do nothing and expect God to do everything. Understand very, very clearly. God himself decided with every deliverance, there's a God part and there's a man part. Now, God is, will not do what you can do. God's not going to dress you in the morning. Hello? Nobody of you climbed out of bed this morning and God dressed you. And the Holy Ghost didn't tell you what to wear. You chose. We can see it. I mean, this arm is in a sling, literally, I can't move it, okay? So to dress with one hand, there wasn't suddenly, the Holy Spirit is my helper. But it didn't suddenly dress this side. I had to figure out how to tie my shoelaces um, so I can tell anybody now how to do things one-handed. Because you figure it out. I say, long genoeg sikkel, dan maak je plan. Hello? You make a plan. I didn't come here today barefoot and say, well, I got a sore shoulder and I can't help myself. And, or I came here with my pajamas and I just said, I can't put on a suit, literally, okay? But I'm doing my best in the way I dress. But what I'm saying is, I'm doing what I can do. Simple illustration. Why would we choose rather to be inactive and play the victim and find a reason not to progress when... Everything around us is progressive. I look at my grandkids. I have five of them and they are progressing all the time. You don't see them for a few weeks. You see how they've progressed. You look at your lawn, it grows. It progresses. You look at nature, it progresses. Everything in life progresses. Nothing stays the same. The only thing that regresses is what is in the hands of the government. Okay, I'll say it again to make you mad. Maybe they get so mad that you will vote right next time. The only thing regressing is what the government is controlling, unfortunately, at this point in time. Things are regressing at a rapid rate. They are lost, some of you, but you have to open your eyes. I mean, this building doesn't maintain itself. We have to maintain it. We have to keep it clean. It doesn't clean itself. You walk into a place that's in excellence every day, but because we maintain it excellently, You go back to Bloomfield and you see the regress. And that typifies, unfortunately, the lives of many people that they just regress and it doesn't bother them. It doesn't bother them. You look at them a year later and you think, are you the same person? You listen to their language. People that used to be on fire for God, that God is not even in the vocabulary. And you think, what's happened? You've regressed spiritually. Or people that used to be positive talkers, all they can talk about now is negative stuff. And you see how people regress, which is anti the nature of God. Nothing about God regresses. The universe, the stars, the sun comes up 
in its full brightness every day. The moon shines every night. The stars twinkle every night. That's why David says, God, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Because David is wowed by God every time he gets up. The birds sing in harmony except the hardy dove of South Africa. Further on, everybody, every other bird sings perfect. God says, why do you worry about the future? I clothe the field and I clothe the grass and consider the lilies and the birds of the air. He says, are you not of much more value than all these things? Oh, you of little faith. You have a father in the heaven. So stop doubting God and stop criticizing what God can do and God cannot do and become liberated in your walk with God and have been, been knocked to the ground. Believe that God wants to pick you up. Believe the Bible that says every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of light to them. There's no variableness or shadow of turning. Believe that God wants to turn your mourning into dancing, your sorrow into joy, your sackcloth and your ashes. God wants to put a garment of praise upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. That is the God that we serve. A God that will lift you up when you are down. Not a God that will pull you down when you are up. Jesus is the glory and the lifter of my head. And He wants to help you more than you want to help yourself. He has a better plan for your future than you have a plan for your future. He is your Abba Father. Hallelujah. He's a God that restores your losses. He's a God that is a way maker. He's a God that is the rain maker. He's a God of the breakthrough. He's the God who orchestrates your deliverance. But God says, you've got to get busy, Jack Jones. You've got to get busy. You've got to get up, Job, off the ground and stop complaining and murmuring and worship up. I will bless the Lord at all times. You have to make up your mind that God is good. That God is for you. God is not against you. Oh, come on, somebody give the Lord a praise while I take a break. So God never tells them how many ditches to make. I mean, they could have made a few ditches. But they didn't. They made enough ditches. And when they woke up the next day, the ditches were filled. And they drank, which is symbolic of a refreshing before a recovery. David strengthened himself in the Lord. The cure for defeat is the presence of God. That's why you can't stay out of church. When you are tired, when you don't know you just have to drag yourself into the presence of God. God will do the rest. God will revive you. <clears throat> and as you are revived, life will come back. God will put fresh wind in your sails and you will, your sight will be restored and you will have vision. And you'll have belief. And you'll get going again in Jesus' name. So God meets us at our level of expectation. Our expectation and our anticipation is God's invitation. Remember the widow in the Bible that God sent the same prophet to? She was in dire stra straits, so poor that the creditor was coming the next day to take her sons to pay off her debt. That's a bad place. Here comes the prophet, the word of the Lord, and he says to her, go borrow in 2 Kings 4, vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels. Hallelujah. Some of you are as low as you can go. The only way you can go now is up in Jesus' name. Some of you have been down for too long. Things are just going to get better in the name of Jesus. Oh, shout amen in the name of Jesus. Get some faith in your unction today. He says, do not gather just a few. I mean, it's what God says. Don't have a little expectation, teaspoon expectation. No, I'm just going to get along in life, you know. We were born on the wrong side of the railway and my family never graduated. Well, you'd be the first one to get a degree. Thank you very much. Well, you know, you know, we're not as clever as other people. Says who? Who told you? Who told you that you're not beautiful? Who told you that you're not intelligent? Who told you that you're not able? Who told you that you cannot do it? Who told you? 
We need to reprogram your mind and tell you what God says about you. You're a mighty man of valor. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Whether you know your earthly father or not, it matters not. You are designed by God for this hour. And you are designed hey, by God to be the head and not the tail. That's the Bible. You were created by God. He made you. Not your mama and your papa. That child comes from God. So it says, empty vessels do not gather just a few. And when you've come and you shall shut the door behind you, switch off the television. Our television. Switch off social media. Switch off your friends that are all negative. Hello? Jy praat met bedei mense, daar is nie positieve woord wat uit die mond uitkom nie. Alles is negatief, 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 negatief. Hoe kom die misseke mense rondhang? Evil communications corrupt good morals. See you later alligator. Right? You shut the door to unbelief. If you want God to walk you through your valley, you have to shut the door to all unbelief, negativity, to what people are saying cannot be done. Because whenever people say something cannot be done, God sits up and He listens and He sees if He can find somebody that will believe. Somebody that will change the odds. Somebody that will step up to Goliath. Somebody that is not afraid of the Egyptians. Somebody that believes. Even though all the odds are against me and the deck is stacked against me, it doesn't matter. I'm not staying where I am. I'm getting on with my life. I'm going to find a job. Even if it's to be a waitress, I'm going to be the best waitress with the greatest attitude. I'm going to get the biggest tips and somebody is going to find me and somebody is going to employ me and I'm going to have my dream job in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I'm a child of God. I'm going to walk tall. I'm going to stand strong because I hail from God and the seed of greatness is on the inside of me. Somebody will notice me in my prison, Joseph. Somebody will notice you. Somebody will notice you. If you will excel, if you will be better, if you will work harder, if you will be smarter. Not if you work with that entitlement mentality that is so prevalent in our day and age. And if you work overtime, don't put in a bill for overtime. Be smart. When you're squabbling for 100 Rand extra, and, and the boss of that company is looking for the person that is not just a hireling. That he can make a manager. So you want to be a manager, start thinking like a manager. And get rid of this, gimme, 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 gimme. You owe me. Get rid of it. Nobody appreciates that. Your mama might. But outside of your mama's home, nobody, nobody appreciates that. Attitude of entitlement. Dig your own ditches. Let's say dig your grave or your groove. Dig a ditch at the word of the Lord. Get the degree. Stop vacillating. Go get that job. Go make that phone call. Give your tithe. Serve in that zone. Do what God prompted you to do. Stop vacillating. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour it into all those vessels and set it aside the full ones. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full, not half filled, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said, there is not another vessel, so the world ceased. So what do we see from this story? And we see from Peter's story with fishing. We see from the ditches. We see from every story in the Bible that God does not limit the extent of your miracle or your breakthrough or your life. Psalm 78 verse 41, the Bible says, they limited the Holy One of Israel. Mark chapter 6, Jesus could do no miracles because of their unbelief. We talk about the year of the breakthrough. Let's look back after the last six months and look at what ditches you have dug. We're not talking about what holes have you tried to dig for other people through your gossip and your slander. We're talking about what ditches of faith 
How many lines have you cast out into the sea? How many prayers have you prayed? How many confessions have you made? What seed have you sown? What is your efforts that you are putting every day in line with the expectation of breakthrough? Because nothing just happens. I mean, with Peter, the fish didn't jump into the boat. They had to launch out and do the possible. These people had to dig the ditches. God sent the rain. And I'll tell you this. Maybe the greatest thing we can do is to change our attitude towards God, towards ourselves, towards others, and towards life. And to make a decision to get on with it. Not to get stuck in yesterday. It's one thing Paul said. There's one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind. 2020, terrible year. 2021, terrible year. First part of 2022, terrible. Now, we out. I said you are out. The door has been opened. You can now move. You can now move. You can now dig ditches. You can cast your lives. You can cast your break. Our television audience, I know you have to go. We love you. Follow us on uh, CRC Church. Uh, thank you for being with us every week. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. You know, people that live with, with, with a positive expectation don't have time to meddle with the, the, the small negativities of this life. Because every generation has had giants to slay. South Africa, we face many giants. But we will prevail. Or some of us will prevail. If they close the door over here, God will open another door. If, if, if things change, trends in the marketplace, the way we sell our product, we don't fall over and complain and talk about the good old days. No. Now is all you have. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what worked 20 years ago will not work today and will not secure your breakthrough tomorrow. So think about it. You have God who lives in you. God who is creative. God who leads you. God who guides you. God who wants to show you the future and teach you. We can never be in a place of hopelessness. We can never be in a place of, I don't know. Because when we draw close to God as this king did, and it was a desperate situation. I mean, no water. Seven days. Animals starving. Men starving. Facing innumerable odds against them. The king is so negative, he believes it's the end. Then God brings a prophet. Because of Jehoshaphat, a godly man who served the Lord. And God says, things are going to be better. I said, things are going to be better. And it's going to be a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. All you have to do is respond to the word of the Lord and begin to dig some ditches, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your business, maybe in your mindset, maybe in your conversation, maybe in the way you work with your staff, maybe with employments or appointments, whatever it is, God holds your future in the palm of His hand and He is the rainmaker. I'll close and say this again. If God specializes in making rain, we should specialize in making ditches. Not just one home cell in the university. According to your expectation. Not small efforts. Not small prayers. Well, Lord, if you have any time for me, I know you're very busy up there. It's like, okay, he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. He's got you and me, brother. Brother, brother, brother. He's got you and me, sister. Sister, sister, sister. 
in his hand. He's got the whole world in his hand. So what makes you so special that you think God doesn't care about you? What makes your problem so big that you think God cannot solve it? Ha. Huh. My mother always tells me, don't say ha. Huh. I say, okay, mom. Ha. Huh. What makes your situation so difficult? I'll tell you what makes it difficult, and this is where we don't like it, because there's a God part, and there's a man part. I have to get busy reading the Bible. I have to get busy renewing my mind. I have to be, get busy changing my conversation. I have to get busy with my prayer life. I have to get busy with conforming to Christ. I have to get busy with breaking wrong relationships. I have to get busy with not going to the places that steal my faith and my Christian witness. I have to do the possible. We're not talking about works to get you saved. We're talking about you walking in what God has planned for you. Obedience. So the prophet didn't like the king. And yet God delivered the king. Because that's who God is. I don't care what you've done, where you've been, how low you've sunk, it matters not. 2,000 years ago, Jesus paid the price for every sin you've ever committed and every sin you can still commit. This Christian journey is a journey of surrender and dependence. It's not just coming and giving your life to Jesus. It's saying, Lord, I'm going to walk with you into the future that you have for me. And my number one prayer will be not my will be done, but thy will be done. Whatever you please, Father, I will follow that path for my life. For some of you, for things to change, you have to change within. Maybe you're still sitting on the fence. Maybe you're still undecided. I don't know. You know, we can all act happy and Christian-like. But where are you? Inside with Him? And this is something we have to reflect on and evaluate. Every time we come into the presence of God, where am I in relationship to Him? I mean, this is not a religion. It's a call to intimacy. It's a call to walk with Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. And maybe you're sitting out today and you know that your life is not right with God. Somebody brought you here in this holiday. You had to look at someone that you in the church and you slept in your will. Maar is dit een God se wil nie, want God het hierdie ontmoeting gereel met jou vanochtend. En jy het baie vraag aan jou gemoed, maar in jou hart is al bezig om iets te gebeur. God praat met jou. What is it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses himself? There is no life without Jesus Christ. It's the greatest revelation I ever discovered. Jesus doesn't just impact your life that you have peace to go to heaven, but it gives you a quality of life in every area that this world can't give you, that the world wants to take away from you. I'm talking about every area. The way you raise your children, the food you eat, the places you go, what you put in your mouth, the music you listen to, it affects absolutely every area of your life. And you watch people that have walked with God for 30 years and you watch people who haven't. It's like, you know, even if there was no heaven, I'll choose this Jesus kind of life because it's a quality of life that, that, that nothing in the world, not even Buddhism can give you. Nothing. Because it's a life of surrender, of seeing other people who are less fortunate. It's a life of not living self-absorbed. It's a life of caring for other people. And the more you care and help other people, the better you feel. Those things don't take you to heaven. But those things are part of your Christian walk. Where you actually see people. That's what happened to me. When I got saved, forget the colors that I saw colors. Listen, man, I, I, was a, I, I was in shock for a few weeks because I almost died without Jesus. I wasn't like, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
I was like, my word, I just made it. I just made it. And I thought about the times that I was almost dead. The times through riotous living, etc., where I almost lost my life. And I thought, I just made it. I just made it. And that did something in me that I realized, I've got to tell people. I've got to tell people. I just made it by the skin of my teeth. I just made it. Listen, I just, this man, just made it. I almost died many times. I just made it. Just made it. That's why this is not a game for me. I often wondered where I would be. I wouldn't be alive, 10 to 1. What I would have done. The friends that walked with me. One became a political assassinator. Killed one of the top politicians. Blah, blah, blah. Ran out of the country for 30 something years. Hid in Uganda. Too many stories about the people I hung out with. And I got saved. They never did. And their lives turned out a mess. A total mess. Because for them, this Jesus thing was just, ah, okay, Jesus, live Jesus, onze Father, near, 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 near. He's God. In, 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 he had himself for you gegeer. He had for you gesterven, so that you can live. Here is not an unplaksel. Here is a roeping. A roeping tot oorgave. Waar you your life on Jesus oorgee. And then for other things then everything changes. You surrender your life to Him. I want every head bowed, every eye closed, please. People need to come back to God. People need to return to their first love. People need to get back with God. That's where it all changes. That's where it all starts. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving. They're in Bloemfontein, in Johannesburg, in Durban this morning, Vintuk, Gabarone, in all our churches across this great country in southern Africa this morning you may be like the prodigal this morning there's a little voice in your heart that says get right with God I need a new beginning a new start I want to surrender my life to Jesus while every head is bowed every eye closed God's speaking to you in your heart of hearts don't worry about your wife God's talking to her as well I don't care about the people that brought you to church. Maybe God's talking to them as well. I don't know. But I know that God is not willing that any should perish. And you are not here by accident. So this morning if you say, Pastor, I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning, then I want to pray with you while every head is bowed. If that is the cry of your heart, then quietly just slip up your hand. I want to say a prayer for you all over this place. Just lift your hand quickly all over. Raise it, raise it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you, God bless you, bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, up there as well. God bless you. God bless you. There is a heaven to gain. There is a hell to shun. I sat in a meeting with a hangover. Maybe after the rugby you partied all night. It doesn't matter. God saved me with my hangover. He saved me. Forgave me. Changed me. It's the greatest miracle that can take place. You've not yet raised your hand. You've not yet raised your hand. You've not yet raised your hand. You've not yet Tell your hand from the top. I will stand with you, please. Tell them up. Tell them up. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Daso. Tell them up. Tell them up. Up, 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 up. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beautiful people, please, if you will all stand with me in all our churches. Stand with me, please. Just for a moment. Stand with me. Many of you raised your hands. In all our churches, some of you brought friends. Your encouragement for your friend will bring your friend to Jesus. I lead people to Jesus all the time. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a platform uh, witness for Jesus. I talk to people everywhere. I just tell them, hey, Jesus loves you. Huh? I say, huh? Say what? Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. He loves you into the kingdom. He loves you. Why would you not accept His love? Why would you not accept the life that He offers you? There's nothing else out there. So all over this place, you've raised your hand or you did not. Maybe you brought a friend. Your love, your encouragement for your friend will bring your friend to Jesus. Just like Andrew brought his friend to Jesus Christ. So all over this place, please, you raise your hand. I want to pray for you right at the altar there in Bloemendijk. 
Take your Bible, your personal belongings so it doesn't disappear. Leave your seat wherever you are. Don't think about it. Come out of your seat. We're going to pray a prayer of salvation together. God's going to love on you. Come on, don't think about it. Leave your seat and walk to the altar. Come on, walk your friend to the altar. Come on, let nobody feel alone and exposed. You come to Jesus this morning. You follow your heart this morning. You come. You come. You come. You come. There in Bloomingdale, you leave your seat. You walk to the altar this morning. Come on. He promises you a new life and a new beginning today. 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 Come on. Klap je aan dat je nog even wil wees. Kom my broer, kom my vriend. Kom aan, kom aan, kom aan. God doorseer niemand in sy koning krijg nie. God kom en klop in die deur van jou hart. Jy moet haar oopmaak. Jy alleen kan haar oopmaak. Niemand kan haar deur oopmaak. Behalve jy nie. Kom ons gaan hy liekie nog twee keer sing as jy nie wil wees. Dis a klein ding. Dis a klein ding wat jy bedoel. This is maybe the ditch you have to dig. This is maybe your moment just to say yes, 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 yes. Come on. Come on. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. And he won't be embarrassed to say that. Um, you know, it's amazing what God does for people. He's, he's a doctor, and then he lectures as well. So, you know, listen, listen, he stutters. That's not a critic, nee? but when he sings, the stuttering goes away. And then when he lectures, then sometimes when the stuttering wants to come back, he sings. And then the stuttering goes away, and he lectures. And I sing me, Britney Spears me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it because we have to live dependent on God's grace. We have to live dependent on God's grace. The minute you think you've, you've got it all, you've made it, and you're okay, you actually are not okay. It's, uh, and God wants to bless you out of your socks. But let's just live dependent. And please, I know it's holiday, but come on, let's fill this place after holiday. Bring our friends, invite our people, go find the prodigals, bring them back into the presence of God. Come on. Come on, Christians that are still watching us. We can't go fill rugby stadiums and we're afraid to come to church. Yeah, never. 
Amen. Just let me pray with you, please. Close your eyes. Everybody in all our churches, pray with us right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I open my heart and I invite you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. Thank you that you love me personally. You care about me so much that you died for all my sin. I believe today that you are the Christ. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you're alive. Today, I accept you. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Thank you for a new beginning, for the forgiveness of all my sin, and for setting me free. Touch me now, Father, in my spirit, my soul, and my body. And use me as a vessel of honor for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. 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 It's the greatest honor to pray a prayer like this with anybody. Because I know it changes everything. Please, can we spend a moment with you today? Put a Bible in your hand if you don't have a Bible. And just see whether you would like to connect with us to help you in this journey of Christianity in a new way. So if you will turn to my right, please, your left. Yeah, in uh, Pretoria, in Johannesburg, turn to my right, your left. In Bloemfontein, turn to my left. Your right in Bloemfontein and in all the other churches, follow the pastors. Come on, let's give all these people... A big God bless you this morning. Come on, we are here to win the lost at any cost. We are here to plunder hell and populate heaven and every person matters. Every soul matters. Your friends matter. Your family matters. Your mom and your dad matters. Your children matter. Come on, bring them into the presence of God. Let God do the rest in Jesus' name. Pray this little prayer with me this morning if you would. Just lift your hands if you want. If you don't, you know, that's your choice. Just say, Father, I submit my life to you. I trust you with my future. I cast all my cares upon you this morning. And I ask you to touch me, to refresh me, to revive me, restore my sight. And rekindle the fire in my heart. And use me, Father, in these days for your glory. I trust you with my future and with my life. And I thank you that you love me unconditionally. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And God bless you. Big hug to all of you. I'll hug you when my this thing is off. Let's make this world a better place. Let's make South Africa a better place. There's always somebody that is worse off than you. Just put a smile on a child's face. When you drive out of your estate, just every now and again, Take a coat with you and give it to somebody. Go bless somebody. If you have and you see somebody struggling when they buy groceries, offer to pay those groceries and tell them to put better things in that cart and just bless them in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes you have to go to a shopping center on the other side of town just to be a blessing to somebody in Jesus name come on we are the hands and the feet of Jesus let's not live self-absorbed and self-consumed lives that's not why we are here we give to God's kingdom and we give to the poor those two things are not negotiable we bring our tithe and our offering to the house of God and then we always give to the widows and to the orphans and to the poor When you go to a restaurant, be a good tipper. Do not be one of these stingy people where you have a bill of 2,000 rand 
en jy geef 50 rand tip. Drink bykie minder wijn en bless die mense. Gee mense hoop. Lig mense op. Komplementeer mense. As mense een goeie gesintheid het, sê vir hulle, girl, you've got a beautiful attitude. And pray for them. Father, bless her. Give her a job. Help her. Lift her up in Jesus' name. Come on. That is Christianity, not just here on a Sunday, but out there where we can tell people, Jesus loves you. That's why I want to bless you. Come on, be a hard worker. Be diligent, be faithful, be disciplined, be an example in the workplace. Um, Be the standout person. Be a problem solver in that company. A solution finder. Add value. Be the Jacob in Laban's company. And watch how God will bless the company because of you and how God will bless you. Do not be somebody that demands, somebody that is entitled, a young person of 25 years old and you want to be a director. No. You pay your dues. You serve. You faithful. He that would be great in God's kingdom, learn to be servant of all. And if somebody has given you an opportunity in the workplace, be very grateful. We have 40% unemployment in South Africa. Be grateful. Work hard. Be smart. Be excellent. Represent your father well in the workplace in Jesus' name. I mean, I say this because I love you. And we can't just be in a Sunday bubble and think things are going to be different tomorrow. Go, go, dig that ditch in the workplace and be different. So people say, hey, things are different about you and work harder and solve problems, work faster, take shorter tea breaks and and lunch breaks and all the nonsense people do. I don't even know what it is. Go beyond your contract. Amen. Take your seat, please, as we receive this morning's offering. And, um, you know, I got saved. I heard about tithing, and it became part of my life. Because if it's in the Bible, I believe it. I don't debate it. I do it. I do it. Bring all your tithe and your offering into the storehouse, the place that you are fed. God bless you as you remain faithful. May the windows of heaven remain open. May God bless you beyond your wildest dreams. As you build his house, may God continue to build your house in Jesus' name. The ashes may rise while we listen to an anointed item. God bless you. Love to each one of you.
your presence here now we are set free now hands lifted high in worship here now your fear is here now we win here now yours is the power and glory here now your presence here now we are set free now hands lifted high name of Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord, for a great message in Jesus' name. That, Lord, whatever your people are going through, Lord, we declare this morning that it's a simple matter in your eyes in the name of Jesus. That there will be a sudden lease, a rapidly, a quickly in their life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for every man, every woman that has given into the offering, Lord, as an act of worship to advance your kingdom. We say, Father, Bless them sevenfold, hundredfold in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people say amen and amen. Don't forget tonight, Pastor Atul.